What's going on, all you movie lover badasses out there? Fat Samurai Guy is here with Little Fat Blood. And welcome to the third part of our quarantine extravaganza. So, so. <laughs> Where during this lockdown, we're going to talk about movies. Especially the most recent ones we've been watching. So Business as usual. Film discussion, as you will. Except these are just movies that we own. or Not of, all of them. Some of them we streamed. Except for going out. We say we're not going out. As if we were going out and watching movies before. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I kidding? Ah. Anyway. Yeah, but, but we, we, were, we, <clears throat> we did want to try to, you know, focus on more things that we owned. Well, yeah. Because we got a lot of movies. Yeah. We, we, have gotten, we have not gotten around to watching all of them. So. A lot of It's the perfect movies. time right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm watching TV shows that I've owned for years. Yeah. <laughs> which is a miracle. You've been watching American Gods? Right? I did. I finally I finally watched the first season of mm -hmm. American Gods, only to find out that they jump showrunners and season two is a mixed bag. Ha <laughs> ha. Damn it. I finally finished Legion. Yay for me, which right. I love Legion, so yay, good for me. So you still love the show? I do. Okay. I mean, season one for, for Legion, it's, it's, still it's, the best. it's always going to be my personal favorite. It's okay. my personal favorite, okay. um, but the show is so consistently wacky and just bizarre and out there that yeah. I just, I respect the hell out of it for attempting what they did, Yeah. Um, and I, I do respect a show that has the balls to end. Right, right, right. And not try to stretch things out like apparently what American Gods is attempting to do. Mm. Which is not the best thing to do when you keep switching showrunners because you're going to fucking, it's going to bite you in the ass. If yeah. you just have a planned ending, mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about, well, what if we don't have a showrunner and then things go wrong and blah, blah, blah. Right. And now you're going to have, well, cliffhanger for season three and four when you could have just ended it at season three. Because this is based off a book. Right, right, right. Beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. Chop, chop. But yeah. Not my place. Yeah. At least I like season one. Right. Speaking, anyway! Speaking of season one, <clears throat> uh, the only shows that I've finished was Warrior. It's fucking badass. Warrior. I highly recommend that if you guys are uh, martial arts action junkie enthusiasts. Hmm. Uh, I recommend Warrior. But no, on my fucking luck. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, fuck you, Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck you. No, on my luck. Warrior season five will be the worst season ever and ruin the whole show at this point. <laughs> anyway, but we're here talking about cinema. That's why we're here. Talk about films. So, what was your pick? Were you did you pick first or did I pick during this? Um, time? this time <clears throat> you uh, did. Yeah, I did. This was a film that again harkened back to the good old days of when AMC was called American Movie Classics, and they used to show old films and they actually one of my favorite things that AMC used to do was they had these hosts mm -hmm. and they would actually try to educate people on why certain films were widescreen right, right. and one of my favorite things that they would do was they would air movies first in full frame because back in the day when AMC was AMC standard film standard movie or TVs were still in the uh, the 4 by 9 ratio yeah. Yeah. So they would still show films in pan and scan, as they were called back in the day. But then, later on, in the second, they would show movies about twice a day. And then later on, like after 7 p.m., they would re-air the films in widescreen. Beautiful. And then they would tell people why they were airing them in widescreen. They would even go so far as to put together vignettes why they were airing them in widescreen and show the difference. It's pretty cool. Like, I remember very vividly, they would <clears throat> show excerpts from The King and I. And they would show the difference of how much footage you were losing right. when you would air it in pan and scan yeah. versus widescreen. And I loved shit like that. Um, but they would also have like director days. And uh, one of the reasons why I was such a fan of Rebecca was because they had an Alfred Hitchcock day. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rebecca was one of the films that they showed. And this film that I'm that I showed you mm -hmm. was one of the movies that they showed. I've never heard of it. And yeah, it's, it's it. probably one of his lesser known <clears throat> movies because it came from the 40s. Now, right. I would consider probably the 50s to 60s Alfred Hitchcock's golden era of his probably most well-known movies. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get your Vertigos, your Psychos, your um, North by Northwest, mm -hmm. you know, all those super, super duper classic yeah. movies. Those were all 50s to 60s. Um, 
And uh, what was the movie we just watched? Rear Window. There you go. That was 50s. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, all those movies, um, you know, this was 40s that we're talking about here, the movie Lifeboat. Yeah. Rebecca was 41, I believe. Lifeboat, 1944. Wow. uh, Before widescreen was even a blip on the map because (laughs) TV wasn't even a thing yet. Not really a thing. Not like a household item yet. And uh, this was still during the war, obviously, World War II. And so you're going to get a little bit of, um, you're going to get war talk in this film. Uh, in fact, it is, a, <laughs> it is a U-boat that sinks a ship that all these passengers are on. And the whole premise of the movie is these passengers that make it to this rickety old lifeboat that's lost most of its supplies. And it's their struggle to survive on this lifeboat. And uh, I remember watching it, this, God, this had to have been had to have been in the mid to late 90s when I saw this and it's one of those movies that I remembered it Mm -hmm. and then I forgot I saw it right 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 and then when we did our podcast Mm -hmm. about Rebecca yeah somebody in the comments section asked have you guys ever seen Lifeboat oh that's right and I said shout out to whoever uh, uh, put that in the comments and I said oh my god I have I totally forgot and I'm like I love that movie that movie was amazing and I immediately sought it out. I ended up going to eBay because I found out that there was a steel book. Steel book. And because uh, there was there was a cheaper the, the cover the cover of the new release is perfectly fine, but the steel book was beautiful. It was a little yeah. more elegant looking, and it's a collector's item mm-hmm. and uh, kind of hard to find now. So I did pay a little bit more for it, um, but for me it was worth it. And uh, it's an, it's a another region, so mm-hmm. we had to bust out our all region player. No big deal. And um, I, I was uh, hoping you'd be okay with it because mm-hmm. it's literally nine people <clears throat> in a lifeboat for an hour and 40 minutes. And you know how nervous I get when I have to show you a movie where it's just nine people in one location. Or nothing really happens. Exactly. Right, it's right. one of those <clears throat> movies where it's dialogue. It's just dialogue and yeah. situation where it's just... People in a boat. People bickering. Same location. Dialogue. People having conversations. A little bit of character development here and there. Now, I knew I was going to be okay with the movie because I saw a movie a long time ago starring uh, Robert Redford called All is Lost. Ah. And it's a very similar type of setup. It's just him on a boat. No dialogue, really. Mm. Very little dialogue. And it's kind of a survival film. Mm. And that's it. That's the whole movie. Mm -hmm. And I really liked All is Lost. If I got that title wrong, I'm sorry. But I really liked that movie. It was really, really good. And... Another good example is uh, another classic is 12 Angry Men. Which I have yet to see. That, that might be the next one. I hope so. That might be the next one. We've got to put them on the list. Do we own that The same thing. No, we don't. Ah, no, we don't. shit. We're going to have to remedy that. Okay. Uh, but another similar type of setup. Just a few characters in a single room. Nothing but dialogue. Right. But it's fantastic. Right. right. So, I like the movie. Yay. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I... I got a kick out of just the, <clears throat> the initial setup was just so you see you have this initial shot of the ship just kind of like going you see like a smokestack yeah and you see it just kind of go down and then you have the shot where you're just panning around all this wreckage mm-hmm. and then you have the shot of you get to the lifeboat and it's just two of the bank head and her yeah. furs and she's yeah. all clean and yeah. her makeup's just all perfect and she's just sitting there like well this has happened <laughs> okay <laughs> And, like, one of the first things that the character, uh, there's a character that he, he's just all grimy because he came up from, like, the bottom of the ship where he'd, like, fight his way up and claw his way up to survive. And he's covered in oil and grime and dirt. And he looks at her and he's like, you don't look like you just came from a shipwreck. <laughs> and it's like, no, nah, yeah, she totally doesn't. But I think one of the things that cracks me up about her is that throughout the film, because she did everything she could to keep all of her worldly possessions, she keeps losing everything she owns. And by the end of the movie, she loses everything. And what does she do? She just laughs. Yeah. She laughs hysterically because she just realizes, yeah, who cares? (laughs) I lost everything. Yeah, we're all here stranded. We're starving. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, Um, we're probably all going to die out here. Fuck it. Yeah. um, She actually gives up some of her valuables too. Yeah. To kind of help. I I enjoyed I enjoyed the different characters. Yeah. Um, everybody had uh, <clears throat> everybody had kind of like their little moments here and there mm-hmm. uh, to kind of show who they were. Um, there was a there was that dynamic with uh, the German character. Yes. That popped up, which was the source of intrigue. 
Right. Because obviously a U-boat was what uh, slammed a torpedo yeah. into the Their ship. ship. Mm-hmm. And that U-boat also went down. And so they had presumably survivors, which one of them makes their way to the lifeboat. Mm-hmm. And at first you think he's just some straggler that was following orders. But right. Tallulah Bankhead tricks him into yeah. revealing who he actually was. she's fluent. She's in fluent Ger- in German. German, yeah. Because she's this traveler, <clears throat> she's like a, a reporter, mm-hmm. uh, journalist, you know, like, journalist, and all that. Yeah. She has like a camera with her and a typewriter and all that. I didn't think I was gonna like her. I know. Like instantly, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This chick's done. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for them to throw her overboard. Yeah. Um, but then by the end, I was like, I, I was kind of yeah. Okay, she's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what? How much do you want to talk about? Oh, uh, we probably shouldn't spoil it. Yeah. It's it's one of those movies again. It's like this is this is a slow burn movie. Yeah. This is the epitome of a slow burn with yeah. I, I wouldn't say that there's no payoff, but there's yeah. no action. No. There's no action. There's right. no action piece of oh, we got to get this to get our motor running. No, there's no motor. This is lifeboat. Yeah. There's no motor yeah. scene to get us to the island, to get us to the flare, to get us to the ship. There's none of that. The, the highlight of the movie is that there's this storm that fucks up their lifeboat. Yeah. And Which leads to the most hilarious scene yeah. between... <laughs> yeah. The, what's it called? Uh, Tallulah Bankhead and, and the other dude. Who have um, been at each other's throats. Yeah. The whole, the whole yeah. movie. They, they think and then as soon as the storm happens and... The fucking ship the, goes to crap. Basically, they could be they could get yeah. washed over any yeah. minute, yeah, washed yeah. overboard at yeah. any minute. Yeah. And what do you do when you're about to die? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they basically just like lock lips. They start making. Up. And it's fucking hilarious, and they're like kind of a thing for the rest of them. Yeah. Um, Off and on. Yeah. yeah. When they're not yeah. when they're not. Bigger. Some other people were kind of hooking up though. Yeah, that one other couple that. Yeah. But then you had some really like I mean it, it comes down to, to the performances of the actors, which is very well done in this movie. But there's some really really great directing from Hitchcock, some suspense building. But it, it comes down to the the performances because you get these really good series. You get some funny scenes that were hilarious, and then you get some really serious scenes like, oh man, we might have to cut this guy's leg off to save his life. You know the 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 German soldier is he does he really know English or not? You know what is he is he hiding anything or he's really legit? Let's follow him since he knows where he's going. He knows how to navigate. There's a lot of back and forth, yeah. black, white, and gray, and that's what that's where this movie shines is uh, these characters and uh, their 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 journey, <laughs> kind of their journey. Yeah. Uh, but we're not gonna we're not gonna spoil it for you guys. We're not gonna tell you if they make it. Or what happens? Something does happen though towards the end where I was like, "Holy shit!" I was like, "Uh, holy shit!" And when you see it, you'll know. You'll know yeah. what I'm talking about. But yeah. I was like, "Alrighty, yeah, holy fuck!" But um, yeah, uh, yeah, very, very good, very well done. I was perfectly fine with it. Yeah. Come on. I mean, it's it's hard. It's yeah. tricky. It was like Rebecca, right. except Rebecca, you had more than one location. <laughs> yeah, it just shows how talented. Uh, Hitchcock is as a director. Yeah. To take one little small location with a few actors and make a very interesting film. So Yeah. Now a lot of other people out there they, they hate the movie Lock. They hate that movie. Like I get it. If it's not for you, if you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. But uh, I would say that's probably similar to Lifeboat I for mean, modern day movies. I personally love starring, that movie. Starring Tom Hardy. I, I love the hell out of I it. I really liked it. Um, but so. yeah, I mean, one guy in a car. One guy in a car on a phone. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, I can see that how that would be a little bit more rough. Yeah. To, to, but to we kind of knew but, that going in, though. I mean, like, we knew that was the premise or the setup of the film. Yeah. But it, it was a one man performance it's, piece. You know, have you guys seen plays where it's just one man performance piece doing the entire play? And I mean, it's like know? it's like it's something different. Yeah, it's like why not? Why and not? Why such, not watch something different? If you want to go watch great... Mad Max, go watch Mad Max Fury yeah. Road. Yeah. which I love too. So yeah. <laughs> it's like why not? We yeah. like we like it all. Have something different. It's yeah. like there's as long as it's good. That. My well, yeah, favorite part of my favorite part of Evil Dead Two is Ash alone in the cabin. Yeah, it's like yeah. when the other people show up. Yeah, it's fine, but I love that motherfucker getting tortured in the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it when he's by himself. Yeah. It's like I don't need other people around spoiling the fun. Yeah, torture yeah. Ash in the cabin by himself. <laughs> it's like that's fun. We could use fifty more minutes. Exactly. But yeah, I, I recommend Life Ball. I thought it was very very good. But I never, you know, when like you said, when you when you, when people start talking about Hitchcock, they immediately name. 
Psycho, Rear Window, you know, all the yeah. uh, Vertigo. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of this. Yeah. Never. Yeah. So it was nice to uh, watch something, uh, you know, uh, not, well, not blind by adventure for you. But yeah. It, you know, it was a first timer for me. So again, thank you out there. Uh, for reminding me that I had yes. seen something that Put I in the comments. I loved and I totally forgot yeah. that I had seen that. Like, yeah. I never would have gone out and bought that. Like, that's a movie that I'm glad that I own. But I would have forgotten to have gone out and purchased it. I highly doubt we'll get a remake for today's audience. <laughs> oh, <laughs> There's no. no way in well, hell. They would have to modernize the They would shit do out of a it. movie like that. And that's the thing. This was based. Today. This was based on a book. In, in theaters. This was based mainstream. on a, This was based on a book, and I would assume that it was based on a book written at the time, which would have to be World War II based. And right. I mean, you could, but what's the point? Right. What's the point? Yeah. I mean, you, you get you get World War II movies still made to this day. Yeah. You know, Dunkirk came out just a couple of years ago, but right. what's the point? You got you got a movie like that, and it's just like, yeah. oh, you want modern day stars? Like, who cares? But like you said, it is nice to see something different. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, recommend Lifeboat. Now, it was my turn to pick. Finally. I've been wanting to show her this for years. Finally, and I've been hearing MST references regarding this film for decades. <laughs> decades, I tell you. And I've been wanting to see this forever. Yeah. And you only own two different versions of this because yeah. you got the original and the Steelbook. Yeah, Steelbook. And again, yeah. MST has been torturing me with references for this. I uh, finally. You talking to me? I can't even look at you right now. Oh God, no, no, please don't. Oh no. Oh. You, you, you talking to me? Oh Jesus, no. <laughs> I don't see nobody else standing here. Oh no. <laughs> there, there's some GIF footage for you guys. Oh no. Say break, guy GIF. <laughs> oh no. Taxi driver, finally. That's right, 1976. Yes. Finally. Martin Scorsese classic. That's right. Yeah. Now, I always thought it was a great film. I actually, it's, you've got to flip the script now. Yes. I didn't know how you were going to feel about this. Really? Thing. Yeah. Why? Because it's very, it's different, but he's not very, uh, he's not a very likable. Oh, oh okay. Uh, okay. You know, antagonist, well, I mean, excuse me, protagonist. Well, no, not really. Kind really of both, no, actually. No, but. No, he's, he's more of a, just a main character. It's hard yeah. to call him protagonist. Yeah, not, yeah. Let me just get this out of the way. This Blu-ray, phenomenal looking picture. Yeah. Oh my God. Sometimes old 70 films, they, they look and, ugly. And I was worried because the first couple of, of scenes, because they were like, they looked like they were, they weren't stock, but they looked like the, 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 the picture quality just didn't look all that great. I'm like, oh, it's going to be one of those movies where it just didn't transfer well, or the, the film quality just didn't quite make the cut. Um, but then when the actual main meat of the movie kicked in, it was like, Whoa, this looks beautiful. And this this movie, what a time capsule. Yeah. Oh my oh, yeah. god. If you want to see what 70s New York looked like. Yeah. Just the grime yeah. and the dirt. Yeah. And just the just the, the Just a scene of the camera walking down, you know, following a character walking down the hallway. Yeah. Of a of a dirty old yeah. fucked up apartment. You're literally like yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want to take a shower after you watch yeah, this movie. We're, we're talking like cracks in the wall, stains on the wallpaper. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. like every every frame is like this disgusting, beautiful masterpiece painting <laughs> that somebody like put just like took their armpit and a piece of, of, of canvas and just went there. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous in the most ugly, hideous, yeah, right. grotesque way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean that as a compliment, yeah, believe it or not. Yeah. It's it's a great looking film. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it yeah. is fascinating. Yeah. It's a fascinating it's a fascinating watch. Just uh, this this world that this character creates in his head, mm -hmm. and how just how socially awkward he is. Yes, I saw the influence from that that seeing Joker first. Right. Obviously, I I saw the the comparisons. I saw the influences. Right. Um, still, I, Joker's still good though. It isn't like yeah, and I'm, sour our enjoyment of Joker. And I'm, I'm not here to to compare and contrast and no. to say who did it better. No, I'm not here. I'm not here to. No, because it. some of the greatest movies of all time were obviously inspired. Yeah. By a previous film the director saw. Yeah. I mean, everyone's inspired by something. Right? Yeah. Um, 
I, I found Travis to be a very engaging yeah. character. Yeah. Um, his motivations are very. It's like, what is this? What is he? What is his? What What is he doing? Like, yeah. What What is he thinking? Like, yeah. I like the narration. Yeah. That aspect of it. His His the writings narrow, and all. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah um, but even there's some shots of his face where he's just his eyes. Mm. He's just looking around like he don't really know yeah. what's in his head, what's going through his head. Yeah. And even he, the character, Travis Bickle, Bickle, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Um, can't really explain. Mm-hmm. He can't really get it out. You have this scene with uh, Peter Boyle, because, you know, Robert De Niro, he's a taxi driver. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> but Peter Boyle, every time you have his character, he's with the rest of the taxi drivers, they... They sit around, they have lunch, and they talk. They shoot the shit, right? But Peter Boyle's character's kind of introduced that he's kind of been there the longest. You know, he's not necessarily the alpha, mm-hmm. but a lot of people do go to him for advice. So De Niro, uh, Travis, and him go outside, and he's just, he's really, he can't, really good acting by De Niro. He just can't get it out. He, he, he Something is wrong with him. He's going through a lot of shit. You know, the the, the the job he's working is horrible. He's seeing horrible things. He's a vet, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's seeing... He, he can't like, sleep. He can't like, sleep. He, he keeps asking for longer hours because yeah. he just can't... He wants to work as long and as he can. he's working in a horrible area. Yeah. You know, with crime and all that stuff. And uh, <laughs> you even have that scene where Martin Scorsese makes a cameo in the back seat. Very you know, odd. Paying De Niro to spy on his wife. But and he's he, got, he's like... Very odd scene. He's like, he's like, he's like, hey, I got a gun back here. Yeah. Yeah, did you know my wife's cheating? Yeah, yeah did you know that? Huh? Yeah, I got a gun. Hmm? <laughs> De Niro's face is just like... Like, fuck, man. Mm. So, but he's, he's trying... He's not happy. He's lonely. He's he's horrible with relationships. He tried to have a relationship with uh, Sybil Shepherd, which went horribly wrong very very went awkward. really bad yeah uh, so he's just he's lonely you know and, you know things aren't going his way and he's in this crime uh, ridden uh, city and he's going through a lot of stuff but he needs a way to express himself he, you could tell he wants to do something whether it's positive or negative we don't know to him it's positive mm. but he's trying to get it out to Peter Boyle and he can't he can't find the words because he he himself isn't sure, mm-hmm. you know, until he starts taking things in his own hands. Yeah. Because because you notice, especially when you when he get introduced to the uh, young prostitute played by Jodie Foster, you can tell he actually does care for her. He actually wants to help her. Yeah. But. Every scene they were in together, I'm just like, this is going to end bad. Yeah. This is going to end bad. And it does. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Spoilers. Yeah. It does. And I was just like, you know, he, he may have good intentions, but he's he needs help. Yeah. And it's just, this is not going to go well. Right. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's dealing with a lot of shit. And, you know, he... he Ramps up to vigilante status, I guess. He starts working out. He starts training. Yeah. You know? And uh, he, he starts, you know, getting guns and stuff like that. And he makes the really awesome badass, you know, whoosh, the wrist thing where the gun comes out and he catches the pistol and stuff like that, which was pretty cool. But he's just misguided. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? His character's just, he wants to do good, but it's just, he's doing, he's going, to, he's going about it the wrong way. Right. right? So, but uh, just, I really like the soundtrack too. Mm. Soundtrack was really good. Yeah. Again, you know, Scorsese's directing is top notch. Cinematography is great. The acting is great. Pacing is great. Oh, shout out to Pimp Harvey Keitel. <laughs> I haven't watched Taxi Driver in years. And when you saw the camera <laughs> panned over and showed Pimp, oh my God. Pimp looking Harvey Keitel. We couldn't stop laughing. We were like, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> Another very, very underrated actor. Yeah. In yeah. my opinion, Harvey Keitel. Very yeah. underrated. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, he's always been, been great in what, you know, things he's been, so. But, um, I mean, fuck that climax at the end. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. Cause, cause he, he, Holy he shit. has this, he has this harebrained scheme. There's. The Sybil Shepherd character, she's like campaigning to get this this dude elected to president. Right. And uh, so at first, at first, because he's going out, because uh, Travis wants to get in with Sybil Shepherd's character, 
um, he's like trying to help the campaign efforts for that, but that goes south because yeah. the relationship he tries to forge with her goes right. south very quickly. Right. And then he devises this strategy to assassinate yeah. the dude. Yeah. And um, yeah. I don't know if it's to get her att- attention or. Yeah, it wasn't really made you know, too clear. Because um, at first it kind of seemed like he was on his side. Yeah. You know. And. He kind of agreed with his. You yeah, know, I'm gonna clean up the city. I'm gonna do good. Yeah, and, and, and it uh, seems like it seems like he always had this this idealized version of somebody, and then as soon as that idealized version was shattered, he immediately saw them as like this evil something else, you know, yeah. entity or something. And so that when as soon as he gets found out and he gets caught, and yeah. he has to run away. Yeah, and then he goes back after the the Jodie Foster character, mm-hmm. which kind of transitions into that crazy finale yeah. which I didn't see coming ah, yay. it was like it was like cause I, I was mean, waiting for it I was like shit it's about to go down cause fuck. it was like and I was still like fuck like cause I'm watching it here because it's like and I'm like dude you, you forget you, you kind of forget that movies in the 70s like you know movies prior to the 70s violence unless it was like Italian movies right right or whatnot, like if, unless it was a Sam Peckinpah movie or something. Right, right, right. Movies, movie violence was kind of sterile, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like the blood looked orange. Yeah, and <laughs> if there was blood, it like paint. Yeah, yeah. And, and very rarely was there a whole lot of it. It was very right. rare to get a level of brutal violence. Yeah. And then the '70s, kind of from from what I've seen, the '70s really started ushering in that brutality yeah. of just like we're just gonna like fucking go for it. Yeah. And Rolling Thunder. And this another good movie. To go. Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, starring Tommy Lee Jones. But so this this whole movie. movie, there wasn't any of that. It was all just character. Mm-hmm. This underlying tension because yeah. you never really knew what Travis's intentions were. Yeah. So there was like. But this, you could you, yeah you could feel something. Yeah. Building. So like I said, like the the whole time there there's this underlying tension because of Travis. So you don't know what it's building up to. Yeah. So you have the benefit of just that tension building slowly, 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 slowly. Yeah. And you know he's got all these weapons strapped to him. And you don't know what exactly his intentions are with the Jodie Foster character. You know he wants to help her, and you, but you know she doesn't really want the yeah. help. And so you don't know how he's going to react to that. Right. And so when he finally goes up for that, and you know that the Kai Tao character isn't going to let her go. Right. But then, like, when once that the whole, conflict, once the that confrontation. conflict started, yeah. and it just like went down. Every time somebody got shot, yeah, it was just like just boom, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, yeah, and it was just yeah. like, oh my god, it felt real. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. It just it just had this level because yeah. because the movie was so devoid of violence. Right. Because the movie felt so real and gritty and grimy mm-hmm. the whole time. Yeah. Because it felt like, because obviously you were filming on the streets of New York and you were filming in actual buildings and it in wasn't, New York. And what made it, it, also it wasn't, there was there was nothing stylized. Right. There wasn't any slow motion stuff. Right, right, stuff. right. So because yeah. the movie had this realistic feel to it anyway, once the violence hit, it felt all the more real. Like the impact felt real for me. Yeah. So it just like, it felt like, the, it just felt so hard hitting for me. So it really packed. I wish punch. I I wish I could go back in time and, <laughs> and see how the audience reacted. I wonder if they were to disturbed. That movie. They probably were like, "Fuck." I wonder if hell. the I wonder if the movie was disturbing. Yeah. But the ending, a very ambiguous ending. So after the confrontation and the climax, we have extra scenes afterwards before the movie ends. Mm. So let us know if you guys thought that if you guys think that those scenes after that confrontation were real and legit. And this is how the movie ends, or that was still in Travis's head. Okay, and I'm gonna go with. Are you, do you agree with me? That it was. It's in his head. It 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 seems like it. Yeah, because that was a little bit too sweet. Yeah. And after that traumatic experience, I highly doubt that the way the movie ended up yeah. ended up after that I kind of highly doubt that really happened too many nice things happened after yeah it was that. way way too, too many sweet. nice things yes. it wasn't even just yeah. the Jodie Foster character Jodie Foster's parents the Sybil Shepherd character yeah, even the was, newspapers yeah I think that was in uh, Travis Bickle's head right towards the end 
I think that's what it was in his head. So, But let us know. Let us know. We want to hear you guys' take on that. So, anything else about the taxi driver? It's, it's iconic for a reason. And uh, the you talking to me line was ad-libbed by Mr. De Niro. Though. Go figure. So, yeah. Now we come to the film. Uh, I've kind of heard of this movie. What about you? I don't, like, like, barely. I don't think I had. Um, I was more familiar with the French Connection, mm. you know, because that's one of Gene Hackman's, you know, iconic role. You know, he plays Popeye Doyle. Right. You know, and uh, I'm more familiar with, you know, that's one of Gene Hackman's top ten movies and performances, right? I never really, I like, I've heard of the title. Right. But no one really screamed, dude, you gotta see the conversation. Like yeah. the, I've never like got that vibe from that film. Yeah. Right? Um, now, how did you find out about it to recommend it for us to check out? There was a video on YouTube. Okay. Um, I think the channel's called Joe Blow. Okay. And they, Joe Blow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had done a video about Francis Ford Coppola. Oh, all right. Nice. And they were talking about some of his movie. They were yeah. talking about his filmography and sandwiched in between, I think the, Godfather 1 and 2, mm. he did this Shit. film called The Conversation, wow. 1974. Yeah. And um, I'd never heard of it. I'm yeah. like... I never, like, I don't know what it was about. I mean, obviously I've heard of The Godfather. Everybody's yeah. heard of The Godfather. Yeah. Um, I've seen Apocalypse Now. Right. I love Bram Stoker's Dracula. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Shut up. I, I know. <laughs> I know. I love Keanu Reeves. I like it too. I love Keanu Reeves, but he fucking sucks in that movie. <laughs> Winona Ryder has no business donning an English accent, <laughs> nor does Keanu Reeves. Okay, they but ruined, you get they Gary ruined the movie. They ruined the movie, but Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins yes. save it. Yes. So fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> and I love the style of that film. It's bad shit. It's yeah. bonkers. I love yeah. it. It's crazy. It's yeah. like an acid trip. I love it. Now she has not seen the Godfather film. That's true. I I haven't seen them. So um, I'll get around to showing her one and two. Ew. I've heard three is not something I need. I'll to show watch. her Godfather one and two. Yeah, and then we'll go from when there. When we have <laughs> when we have seven hours to see, you don't need to see the third movie. Is yeah. it third film? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So so when I heard about this film, I was like, this this is fascinating to me. It yeah. just sounds like why have I never heard of this? And I heard yeah. it was nominated for an Academy Award for Best yeah. Picture. And I'm just, like, wait a minute! I remember the title, a, and that's it. A Gene Hackman film yeah. directed by Francis Ford Coppola that got nominated, and yeah. I've never fucking heard of it. Yeah. So we were lucky that it was on Amazon Prime. Now, to, to, uh, we, have to, we have to be honest, and we have to prepare you guys. Okay? Yeah. We talked about Lifeboat, right? Yeah. We talked about, uh, what else? Good examples of uh, Slow Burn. Rebecca. Would Rebecca, be, Rebecca, right? Would be very slow. Okay. <laughs> this was a good movie. I enjoyed this film. All right. It's hard to recommend, though. It's hard. It it is. If you're if you guys are okay with slow burn movies, this is meaning again. You know what we mean by slow burn is if the movie's still good, even yes. though it's slow. You just have to have patience. And this is right? this is one of those films if where... If the movie sucks, then, then the slow burn turns into boring. That's how we look at it. How about okay. After Midnight? After Midnight. Okay, where there was nothing. <laughs> there was nothing. Right. This, this is... movie started, and it was taking forever to get toward, you know, during the credits, the yeah. camera slowly zooming in on the crowd. Yeah. And there's a lot of repetitiveness yeah. to the film. Very the slow. The whole purpose of this film is... Gene Hackman yeah. is this he's he's like a surveillance expert yeah. and he he's a freelance that you know he can he, you know government wants to hire you somebody you know rich wants to hire you whatever yeah. to get information on whatever you know he's been hired to get you know conversations from senators you know to get dirt on them whatever and he's known for being able to get the dirt where nobody else could get it you know you want some conversation from some guy in the middle of a lake where there's no possible way you get a bug on this guy, you call Gene Hackman right. to get the information. He's a professional. And much like Travis Bickle, mm -hmm. this guy has no social skills. No. He's he's very much except his his quirk is that he's very paranoid. Yeah. He's very much he 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 will not let people get close to him. He he's established very quickly. So he, awkward. He has this apartment where um, the landlord 
has a key to his apartment and puts like a birthday gift in on his coffee table and he gets freaked out because it's like how the hell did you get this in my in my house how'd you know it was my birthday yeah and yeah, and yeah. he the and it's a one-sided conversation and he's like well you know for, from this point forward i'm gonna have a p.o box and then da, 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 da. like he he doesn't want anybody knowing anything about him because he knows how i think i would assume it's because he knows how easy it is to get the dirt on people yeah yeah and so he because he knows the ins and outs of it and he knows how easy it is so he has this ingrained in him i would think to just he just doesn't want to have he he just wants a private private life yeah. so he 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 does everything he plays he can. saxophone yeah he, he 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 does everything he possibly can do to just isolate himself from everything and everybody um and like he even has this girlfriend in uh Terry yeah. Gar's character. It's more right. like it's more like a fling, but yeah. you can tell he likes her. Yeah. You can tell. Like there's that one scene later where you can tell he really does like yeah. her. But he has zero ability to have a normal life with her because he can't trust her enough to even tell her what he does for a living. Right. And she basically tells him at one point, I'm not gonna wait around for you. I can't live like this, you know. I don't mm-hmm. know anything about you. I <clears throat> I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And um so the the premise is he he has his little team and he has his microphones up and he catches this conversation he's been hired to get this conversation between these two people and these people know that they're going to be followed and they know that they're going to they're they're going to be recorded and so they have this very uh elaborate way of trying to avoid being listened to and they have this fragmented conversation that Gene Hackman is trying to piece together throughout the film. And so throughout the film, you keep hearing fragments of this yeah. conversation. Yeah. And so it might drive you a little bit crazy at yeah. times because you keep hearing the same shit over and over again. Like, you're going to hate when the Red Red Robin comes bob bob bobbing along <laughs> because you're going to hear Cindy Williams sing that 50 times in the movie. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> So it yeah. it depends on what your patience level is yeah. for for a movie where it's very repetitive. It's the yeah. payoff. It depends on what your tolerance for a good payoff is yeah. or what your definition yeah. for a good payoff yeah. is. Um, I was patient with it, yeah. so I enjoyed it. Right. Is it a movie that I'm gonna pop <clears throat> in like a lot? No. Right, right. But is it a movie that I'd buy for cheap for our collection? I think so because yeah. I think it's a good film. Yeah, I think it's it's a good film worthy of right. being in our collection. So, without spoiling too much, <clears throat> he's trying to because uh, some of the parts of the conversation is very muffled. So he's trying to work on you know clearing it up and hearing and uh, getting the message clear. He, he, he meets up with a young Harrison Ford, very who's young. in the movie pre Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny seeing him. And Harrison Ford's like, all right, you got you got the tapes. All right, here you go. Here's the money. And he's like, no, no, no. I want to, I want to meet your boss. I want to give the tapes to your I boss. I said I would give it directly to your boss. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, no. He told me he's he's out of town. He told me just give it to me. Da, da, da. You can already tell something's not right. Something's wrong here. But Hackman is still like, no, I want to give it to to the director, played by the always reliable Robert Duvall. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> and you know. There's some betrayal involved. Is there betrayal involved? We don't know. You know, we're not going to spoil it. You know, but some shit goes down later. Some fucked up shit. And and the Hackman character is he's doing a job. He's very professional. He's very and he's paranoid, but he's very professional at what he does. Right? He mm-hmm. takes his job really seriously. But you know. Him getting intel on a previous job many years ago, many years ago actually got a family killed, and that's kind of haunted him mm. uh, over these years. So he has a he's got a vibe and a feeling with this one that something similar might happen again if he turns over the tapes. Right, he's afraid that the couple that he's spied on and gotten right. this information on is yeah. also going to be killed. Right. Yeah, and Which that's is why he's now he's he's extra hesitant to turn it over now. Pretty so. much, pretty much, and that's basically the premise of the film. So, uh, were you? Uh, did you like the ending because it was a little unsettling? I did. Yeah. Um, it wasn't Without spoiling anything. Yeah, it it yeah. wasn't very. Um, especially, it wasn't like okay, the mo- This is how the movie's going to end, and it's done. Yeah, it wasn't very clean. Yeah. It, yeah, it wasn't clean. It wasn't clean. No. It wasn't happy. No. Um, it wasn't very just. 
No. It wasn't very um, satisfying, which some people might right. have a problem with. Right. Um, some things happened. Did you get a little that... frustrated with Hackman's character in the end? I thought with the finale and the climax, I kind of thought, I kind of was expected his character to do more. But it was kind of like, what else could he do? Like, like, but he's not a he's not a soldier. He's not a warrior. He's not a, he's not a he's not fucking a badass. He's not a cop. He doesn't have any yeah. friends at this point. Yeah. Like he doesn't have so, any resources at this point. They so kind it, of got it, him over a barrel. For, for me, so for me, it was frustrating, but in a good way. Like I wasn't like angry or throwing shit. I was yeah. just kind of like, Ugh. I was kind of like, do something, <laughs> you know? I was like, yeah. but so, you know, the yeah. kind of character he played. Yeah. Um, so I, again, it, it's. It is hard, like you said. It's it's hard to recommend. It's hard to recommend, especially because yeah. we can't tell you why all the reasons. Yeah. Because it's the only thing we can say is that it's hard to recommend it because there's no action. Right. Um, the payoff is probably not what you're expecting. The payoff is yeah. interesting. Yeah. But yeah. it's not necessarily satisfying. Yeah. It is interesting though. Right. Um, but it's not like the ending of the film. You're not going to walk away feeling like, oh, that's so rewarding as right. from a from a storytelling point of view. Like, right. oh, I feel so good having watched that. It's not like right. the fall. Right. It's not like the fall <laughs> where you walk away yeah. from that. Where it's like, well, there were some sad bits in the fall, but ultimately you kind of feel happy having watched the fall. Right. Because of the the end end of the movie, you yeah. you still smile. Right. This movie, you you when the credits roll, you still kind of have this feeling of the pit of your stomach, like ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I kind of like yeah. because so, I kind of like downer endings like that. Yeah. So if so. any of this that we're mentioning sounds interesting to you, right now it is on Amazon Prime. If you guys want to check that out. All right, that's it for today's video. Quarantine extravaganza, part tres. Let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of these films. We want to know your take on them, if you have seen them. We want to thank all you badasses for watching. We'll see you guys next time.